Madam President, Toastmaster Competition Chairman, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. <coughs> How can my nephew with cerebral palsy manage Glasgow Rangers? Tonight I'm going to lift the lid on self restrictions. Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can, whether you think you can't, you're right. The language that, that I have developed for myself has been restrictive. I can't, I mustn't, I never. So I'm going to change that a little bit. I'm thin, I'm good looking, I speak perfect English. There was a Japanese doctor in the 1960s, Masaru Emoto. Maybe some of you have heard of him. He'd done an experiment with water. He realised that crystals from snowflakes were like fingerprints. They were all different. And when you talk to these crystals, they change by the language that you give them. And the experiment they done, he got a glass, and he got another glass, and he put, I love you, and he put, I hate you. And he went in and every day, and he talked to them. And the incredible thing is, through time, he got these crystals and looked at them. And the significant changes in them was phenomenal. The crystals that were feeding the, the good <coughs> stuff were perfection, and the other stuff was all smudgy and, and, and imperfection. If we are 80% water, what are we telling ourselves? And the vibrations of water travels four times faster than it does auditory over the airwaves. In 1992, Kelly Holmes was in the army. She's sitting there in the barracks and she's watching the TV. The Olympics is on. She's got a great love of Olympics. She was youth champion at, at running. And she found this inspiration, this, this drive, this, this, this galvanisation because she's seen someone running in the Olympics in the heats that she used to beat. How many times have I done that? You're doing that wrong. I can do that better from my athletic point of view. And she got up off her bed and she trained and she trained and she trained. And we all know the story. She became a dame and she was a double hole winner because she used self-talk to galvanise her and, and move her forward. I go up to Scotland twice a year. You might not have picked up on it, but um, I'm not from Worthing. <laughs> and um, in fact, I'm a, it's quite a strange scenario. I come down here and I'm Scottish and I go to Scotland and I'm English. And my brother fools about with it and says, phone up the Chinese, they understand your accent better. <laughs> and um, the last time I was up in Scotland, well, it wasn't the last time I was up in Scotland. One of the times I was up in Scotland, my little nephew, he was 16 at the time, and he attends a special school. And I've been along to the school, and there's other children in it, I've got their own um, challenges in life. And my nephews get... get a great pleasure, a great um, passion, a great um, entertainment that he has in life. Um, in fact, he's two. American wrestling and football. These are like three. He's got women. A lot of women as well. <laughs> um, and these three passions um, ignite our conversations as I speak to him each week on the phone. And when I was up there, he's so humorous and so in tune and so um, alert to what's going on in the world. I was pushing him up the hill one time and um, I was sweating and I know he, he's a big lump. And he turned around and he says, Uncle Neil, he says, think of the calories you're burning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, I'll calorie you. And uh, another thing that he done is that like, I'm an alcoholic in recovery. And he says, he said, I've got a new fridge. He said, I've got a new Buzz Budweiser fridge. He said, but you could put your, your Coca-Cola in it. And so we built up a rapport through, although I'm down here, we built up a rapport and I speak to him regularly. 
and we went down and we were, um, we were down the park and we get engaged in conversation about football, about women and about this and that and the next thing is an uncle and nephew would, would do. And I said to him, now that you've left school and you're entering into the, the, the world of adults, what would you like to do? What touch moves and inspires you to move out into the adult world to make your mark and, all, and more importantly, to make your money? And um, he paused and he paused and he paused. You'll laugh, Uncle Neil. I said, I won't laugh. And he said, you will laugh, you will laugh. He was saying this through previous experience. And he turned around and looked me square in the eye and he says, I want to manage Glasgow Rangers. He's in a wheelchair. He's been in a wheelchair all his life. I paused. <coughs> and I paused. And I paused. And I replied, if you, from your unique position in your wheelchair, you can see something that other people can't see, something you can manufacture in great quantities, or expand on something that's already out there, and make vast amounts of money, vast amounts of money, become a millionaire. I said, you can buy into the directorship of Glasgow Rangers. And when you're in the boardroom, as you're walking out, tap the manager, and turn around and say, is there any chance that player can play Saturday? He turned around and he looked me square in the eye, and he says, you're the only one that believes in me. Now, that's a fighting chance. Thanks.